Hello, this is your boy, Apostle, Prophet, Success Coach, Eddie Tate, on this Saturday in another edition of Motivational Saturday. I want to speak something to your mind today. I want to speak something that's going to encourage you, inspire you, motivate you, help you get to the next level. Yes, once again, this is Motivational Saturday. We're on the road to success. And I just want to thank God for each one of y'all today and all the ones that are, I don't know what you're doing, but I want you to stop what you're doing if you can and come on, let's get motivated. Let's get motivated. Let's get down to business. Let's achieve some things. Let's do some success coaching and teaching here. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is it, y'all. I want y'all to listen to me today. I want you to be so inspired that you can go out and do anything that you need to do. Seeing y'all coming on now. Doing Miss Paula. Yes, Motivational Saturday. Yes, 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 yes. We're going to be talking about some interesting things today. Um... Today, just kind of talking about some things that's going to really help you get to the next level. How many know it's about the next level? Yes. How you doing that, Bruce? How do you know it's about the next level in life? That's what it's about. And I came on to inspire y'all on this motivational Saturday. Yes, I have. Yeah. And uh, I want you to help. I want you to understand that there's nothing that you can't achieve. There's nothing that you can't do. Don't even let society and life or anybody else tell you that maybe you done got too old. It's never too late long as you got breath in your body. Like Snoop Dogg say, long as you're breathing, you're achieving. Long as you got breath in your body. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then I'm coming to let you know, don't, don't. See, I'm, I want to deal with some of the limitations and things that, uh, society and life and people give us today on this motivational Saturday, I want you to understand that God wants to empower you to the next level. I want to empower you. I want you to be able to achieve anything you can. See, success, you know, one thing about success is that it leads clues. And if you learn to study what other successful people have done, you can achieve the same things that they've done. Not just study it, but just do what they've done. And guess what? And you can achieve the very same thing because, let me tell you this, principles have no respect of person. Do y'all hear me? Principles are laws of operation. They are rules. They are things that you do, and they guarantee you success. They guarantee you success. Do y'all hear me? I said they guarantee you success. Yeah. You, you, you know, you, you think about the, the principles, just a basic life. If you eat, you live. If you don't, you die. It's a principle. You see what I'm saying? So that's things that you do. It will guarantee you success. I mean, you know, eating. Yeah, I understand some people might eat the wrong stuff and it, it might kill them, but I ain't telling them about that. But I'm talking about basic nutrition you know, healthy food, you have to eat to live. Because if you don't eat, you die. It, it's a principle. Now, these laws work for anybody that work them. That's all I want people to see. I learned that when I began to, I learned that when I learned to start working these laws, you know, I learned then that if I understood laws, I could prosper. And you know what? I can live life beyond limitations. You can too. You, you don't have to be limited. You, you don't have to be limited. No, you don't have to be limited. That's why I get on here and I teach like I do. And by the way, our YouTube channel, you can go to YouTube and get these same messages. Uh, it's Eddie Tate. It's simple as that. You'll see my son, little Eddie, but he's music. I'm music too, but I'm not doing music on that right now. But, he, but you'll see my face, you'll see my videos come up, and you can hit my channel. 
hit the E, hit hit my channel, and all my videos will come up. Yeah. So now, it's very interesting today, the things that I, I want to share with you. That, that there is stuff that I want you to understand that that you can achieve. You are achiever. Now you're gonna have to get this in your mind. You're gonna have to uh get rid of all of the limitations that has been put on you by number one, yourself, number two, society, people, close knit relationships. I mean, people telling you what you can't do because you don't have this or that. You see that? Now, there's a lot of myths and a lot, a lot of things that people call laws of business. Then they say it take money to make money. Sometimes it don't take money to make money. It, sometimes it just take favor. Sometimes it just take uh, somebody open up a door for you and you ain't got no money. The money just have to catch up. So don't let a lack of anything stop you from moving. That's my first principle. Do not let a lack of anything stop you from moving. Don't let a lack. Don't let a lack of money, lack of, of influence, lack of relationship, lack of people. Because if you keep moving, what's going to happen is you're going to find, glory to God, you're going to find that everybody's not going to say no. Somebody's going to say yes. See, you'd be surprised how many singers went through no. Record companies told them no. They told Anita Baker she she can't sing. She ain't no singer. But look at all, how many gold records she sold. Simon told Jennifer Hudson that she'll never make it. Look at it, Grammys, movies. See what I'm saying? Don't let nobody tell you what you can't do. Do y'all hear me? Now, don't let nobody tell you because they feel like, according to you, According to them, you're not qualified. Now, here's the thing. Know your limitations. Know your limitations. And know your boundaries. Know how to stay in your lane. Don't be trying to become something because somebody else is that and some, maybe somebody suggested for you to be that. <clears throat> Y'all hear me? You have to find your lane and you need to stay in it. Now, this is the road to success. When you find your purpose, when you find what it is that you are passionate for, if you find what you are passionate for, see, find it and become faithful in doing it and performing it. We're going to take all the limitations down. We're going to scale back all that today because I know you serve an unlimited God, so ain't no sense of you putting no limitations on yourself and letting nobody else do it. All right. Now, one of the things that you're going to have to do is that you're going to have to forget all your past failures. Yes, we learn from them. But the Bible even says, it said, you know, in the Bible, it says, be, you know, behold, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Do y'all hear me? He said, behold, I do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Then he starts just talking about all the impossible things he'll do. He'll run a river through the desert. He'll cut a pathway through, through the wilderness. Can I tell y'all something right now? You really don't understand who your mind and the power of your mind is. That's why it pays to sharpen your mind. That's why it pays to invest in your mind. Your mind is your most powerful asset. I protect my mind. I invest in my mind. I'll take my mind to seminars. I'll read. I'll continue to fill my subconscious with proper principles and information that I could use it to, 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 to lunge out on and acquire success. Yes, I said in your subconscious state of mind, you are going to have to to get within your subconscious state of mind. You got to feed that, that subconscious through your conscious of where you are right now. That's why you got to read. You got to listen to programs like this. You got to, you got to listen to seminars. You got to, when, when the pastor is preaching, get your notepad out or buy the tape so you can go back, listen to it or read them notes 
something you're going to have to retain in your subconscious mind the things that you are hearing. Do y'all hear me? Yeah, I said it. Most people want to want to sit and just really be entertained. I don't care if they go to a motivational session. They they just want to sit there and sometimes you you, you they don't want to buy the tape. They don't want to sit. But here's the deal: you want to absorb the information. Now we're talking about moving limitations today. Do not be caught up in what's limiting you today. Because what's limiting you today might not be limiting you tomorrow. You might have a lack of money today, but it might not be a lack tomorrow. Do this make sense? Mm hmm Yeah. I, I want you to understand. I want you to understand something. That there is, when you, when you see people that have succeeded, a lot of them were born in poor, and I mean poor situations. I mean poor environments. I know I was. I thank God for God. I thank God for blessing me, training me, and teaching me. And I started studying the pathway to success. I started studying what it would take to be successful to succeed. Yes, I did. And you know, there's things I have not accomplished, but I don't think I'm too old to accomplish them. See, that's the lie that your mind tells you and even some folks tell you. Oh, you ain't got too old to be doing, trying to do all that. Long as I got breath in my body, I got a brain. Come on. And I got a brain. <clears throat> hey, cuz. I got a brain. Yes. I got intellect. I can think. I got a mind. I can project vision. I can see where I'm going before I get there. I can capture an image of the success I want in my mind. And I can brand it in my mind. I I, I could I could I, you know I could embroil it. I it, it could it, I could get it in my mind as an image. If I want to live in a 10,000 square foot house, I just get the image, capture me a picture, and look at that picture. Keep looking at it. If I want to drive a Phantom Rolls Royce, I just get the picture, the image. See what it is. My mind captures pictures. And the more I look at those pictures, the more I look at those pictures, the more reality sets in that it can be done. Now, we're just looking at pictures as long as it's going to do it. But what looking at pictures will do is this here. It's that it will, it will create, come on here. It will create vision in you. And you'll be, be, become motivated and drive will begin to kick in and then creativity will kick in. See, vision Drive creativity. Now we're gonna we're gonna move all hind all hindrances out the way today. This motivational Saturday. We're gonna move all hindrances out the way. In, not not in our mind, because sometimes we want to look at all external. Oh, if it wasn't for my mother, I tell you that my my brother blocking me and the witch down the street praying against me, and I and I tell you I'm fighting these demons and they no 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 no. We gotta come off all of that. Those are excuses for people to stay in mediocrity. Do y'all hear me? Those are excuses for people to stay in mediocrity. Mm -mm. Boy, this is good here. How you doing there, Pastor Mark? This is good. See, people create. They create excuses. To stay in mediocrity. Do y'all hear me? What is mediocrity? Comes from the word mediocre. Mediocre. Which means to be average. Not really, you know, reaching. Just, just stay average. Stay safe. <clears throat> Do y'all know how many people just want to stay safe? 
It ain't no time to almost stand and say, this is the time now you got to leap beyond your limitation. I don't care what's limiting you today. What's limiting you today might not be limiting you tomorrow. Do y'all hear me? I don't care what's limiting you today. And I want y'all to get this. You're going to have to scale back off all them excuses. Because a lot of them excuses is nothing but a dressed up lie. That's all it is. Excuse me because I can't do this. Excuse me. No, no, it's, an excuse. it's a lie. There is things. Now, all y'all want to run around in church talking about I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. And that, and that sounds good. It sounds good until you have to do it. I can build the company through Christ. I can build the ministry through Christ. I can build the career through Christ. Now, let's, let's go through some crystal. How am I going to do it, though? Number one, I'm going to have to acknowledge in all my ways I'm going to have to acknowledge God, and acknowledge means, Lord, I admit I don't know how to do it. Now, now, don't let the fact that you don't know how to do something stop you. It's too much information to it. Now, quit being lazy. It's too much information and knowledge out there. Well, I, 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 I just don't know how to do it. There is one called the Ancient of Days. He know everything. Yeah, this is motivation, and I'm telling you, he knows everything. He's an ancient of days. There's nothing he don't know. Y'all look at me. I got drinking some water. This is it's hot here in Texas. It's hot today. Hey, I'm still in Fort Worth, Texas. But I'm, I'm telling y'all something today. I want y'all to understand something. That you have not called been called to live a mediocre life, just an average life, and you make excuses to stay there. You, 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 you're going to have to come to a point to where you got to become the cream, the cream of the crop. It rises to the top. You're going to have to quit making all these bald faces excuses. Why you can't build your company? Why you can't build your brand? you just going to have to get down and, and quit being lazy and quit seeking a bunch of entertainment. Told you I ain't got nothing against y'all watching TV, Netflix, whatever you want to watch. But make sure you get some educational information going in that TV. Are y'all hearing me? Make sure you get some educational information. Something that's going to transform your mind. Something that's going to transform your thinking. Not none that's going to make you feel good right now. Do y'all hear me right now? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hmm. Do you see that? See, you, 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 you're going to have to understand the fact of the matter is, is that where you want to go is no hard problem for you, but you got to know where you want to go. You're talking about hindrances. That's one of the biggest hindrances, not knowing where you want to go. Talking about, oh, yeah, Lord Jesus, one day at a time. That's all I'm asking of you. No. I'm just going to wing it. No. You ain't going to wing nothing. You're going to start planning. You're going to start setting goals. You're going to start sitting down, getting you some paper out, and set you a goal. Set your goal of how, 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 how much you want your business to make. Project a budget. Get out and find out how much equipment is going to cost. Quit sitting down on your behind. Get up and do something. Yeah, this is motivational Saturday. I might sound like a drill sergeant, but that's all right. Because too many people in the house of God sit around waiting on something to drop in their mouth. Oh, but it's not going to work like that. You're going to have to rise up and become a go-getter. I don't know if I'm not. Am I talking to any go-getters out there? Not these religious. Oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord. He, he, I'm wait. No, no, no. I know there's some things you got to wait for materialization. But while you are waiting. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk right now. I said 
while you are waiting. There is things you can do while you are waiting. Hmm. Well, Lord, I, I don't know what to do. Start doing what you can do. Every miracle you saw in the Bible is a result because people did what they could do first and then God intervened with his supernatural power. Do y'all hear me? Yes. God intervened with his supernatural power. Mm. Oh, boy, 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 boy. The result, when you do what you could do, and you do it in faith, then you wait on God to tell you what to do. But they don't take no thousand years though. Then you begin to release your faith to do what God tell you to do. Oh, but see, that, that 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 don't seem right because I ain't got enough money to do that. God ain't God knew what you had before he told you to do it. All he wants you to do is say yes. Uh oh. Well, God knew I was shy before he called me to preach. You, you, it ain't you going to be the one up there speaking. No way. Get rid of you. It's a, Get rid of you. You're going to have to get to a place to where you trust his ability, his enablement, his anointing. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. So now, things that, that, that are holding you back mentally. Number one. You understand this here. Things that are holding you back mentally is a lack of courage. Courage is the ability to act against fear. That's what's, that's what's holding a lot of y'all back. Y'all see it? A lot of y'all got churches. You're going to get churches. You're going to sit behind and want to pray. Get some flyers made. Get some little posters, little, little mini posters made. And start going around passing them out to people. Uh-huh. Everybody might not come. Maybe there'll be somebody that, that, that you pray on and they're annoying. Get some marketing going. Come on here. Quit making excuses why you can't do that. Hmm. Find all levels of marketing. What, whatever you could do. See that? I'm just sitting on your behind talking about I'm waiting on them to come. You'll be sitting there waiting. A lot of times they're not coming. People, you have to expose your product to people. What I used to do, I used to put CDs in people's mailbox. That's in the radius of my church. And see, you know, here they come. And I said, how, how, how did you find out about this church. They said somebody put a CD in my mailbox and it was good teaching and I came here because I want more of it. That's called direct marketing. Don't tell me. Don't don't you dare. Don't you dare tell me. You got a cleaning company. Get them posters, them little cards made and start putting them on cars and, and, and posting them up in buildings, banks and stuff. Come on here. It's time you have to get mobile. You got a car detailing business. You got your truck, get your equipment, get your, 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 your tanks and get your water. Get out there and start getting at it. Start asking people if they want their car washed. Start showing up at businesses. A lot of times you show up with businesses, people don't mind getting their car washed right there on the spot. And now they got all the portable equipment. It's no excuse for no entrepreneur not to be making money. What's stopping you? Hmm. Y'all see that? All the free advertisement, all the free marketing. You're going to hit markets of people. Now, what is a market? A market is people that buys into what you do. You sell them ribs, you want folks to buy and come and buy your ribs. You're selling clothes, want folks to come buy your clothes. But they'll never know unless, oh, cola Moshe. They'll never know unless you are marketing to them and you're advertising and they see your product. Then that gives them power to bear you. How you doing, Nisi? Sandra? 
You got to understand something here. This is my God. I'm telling y'all something today. This motivational Saturday, I want you to grit your teeth and I want you to understand that listen here, I am not going to be suffering no poverty. I'm not going to be broke. I'm not. My business ain't going under. Uh, my family not going under. My None's going under. Everything is going up. And I'm going to make sure that because I'm getting rid of all of the hindrances, I'm getting them out my way. My ministry is not going down. If I got to fast, I got to pray. I got to get in the presence of God. I got to seek God's face. I got to read. I got to do whatever I have to do. Hallelujah. To do. I'm going to do. Do y'all hear me? Yes, I am. Now, I, I want you all to really understand where I'm coming from today. See, I can tell you about poverty and about being poor. I can tell you. I, yeah, see, see, some of y'all don't understand. I can tell you things about poverty, but you know what? I also can tell you now things about prosperity. I thank God I'm a blessed man. And I'm blessed because, number one, I recognize my assignment that I have to do. I have to teach people the principles of the kingdom and how to prosper. Because it is God's will for you to prosper or do well. Come on, to do well. It's God's will for you to do well with a relationship with him. To do well, to be in health. To, to be in good health, that's God's will. God ain't put no cancer on you to teach you nothing. God ain't made you sick. That's the devil. That's the work of the The Bible said every good and perfect gift come from God. Disease come from the devil. I don't care if you brought it on yourself. It's of the devil. There was no disease in the garden even with Adam when God first put Adam in there. But after the fall, that's when all that stuff, all that demonic stuff came. I want y'all to understand something. He said, even as your soul prosper, your mind, your suke in the Greek, the word suke, soul means Greek, which means your emotional state, your 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 ability to sense this world through, uh, your, number one, your mind, your will, your emotion, intellect, imagination, your mind. The Bible talks about a sound mind. The word sound means complete, peaceful, and well-disciplined. People, mind is out of control. That's one of the hindering blocks of people's success. It's that their mind is out of control. They can't control their mind. They mind run them the wrong way. They, they live out their sub, your, your subconscious. And whatever is down in your subconscious, that's what you're going to do. If you are lazy, if you're fearful, if you are mediocre, you going that's it, but you're gonna have to reprogram that subconscious state of mind. You're gonna have to get diligent habits. You're gonna have to get around diligent people. You got to get away from around losers. You gotta get away from around people that 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 make excuses why they can't do or be what they're supposed to be. You, you need to get around folks like you. Get around people that's believing. The Bible said iron sharpened that iron. You need to get around some iron. Could hang around. People made out of straw and wood and hay. They can't sharpen you. I mean, how well you know them? Oh, them, them my homeboys, my homegirl since the third grade. I don't care when you outgrow people. It is time to separate. It's a harsh reality. It is one of the one of the, the requirements of success. Sometimes request success re requires a mandatory separation. Mm hmm. Mandatory. I said mandatory. There are some people that is mandatory that you get away from around. You stop dealing with. Yeah, they don't think that you think you're better than them. But the thing of the matter is you have to protect your mind. You don't want no mess rubbing off on you. You don't want no bad habits rubbing off on you. You don't want no sloppiness and laziness and stuff rubbing off on you. You want to be diligent. Mm hmm. I said you want to be diligent. Are y'all hearing me? I was looking out the window today and I saw different birds. For some reason, it was something they was all eating. 
And I looked, I just looked, I studied it. And I looked at the birds. There were some doves. There were some um, sparrows. Uh, there was a blue jay. And I saw one woodpecker. Now, the blue jay was by himself and he was kind of causing a little trouble. Messing with the doves because he was trying to gangster the food. The woodpecker on the tree. Getting his, what he get, you know, pecking the tree. But I noticed all of them were together. The sparrows were together. They like in a little gang. The blue jay was by itself. I imagine what other blue jays would have been there. But he was just there causing trouble. And the doves were together. I noticed every kind had a sense of unity. They always say birds of a feather flock together. But every one of the species of the bird, they were in groups. They were accomplished what they were accomplished. They were getting their food, but they was in groups. I don't know what they did after all that, but I was just looking. And I was just looking. Why is it that we hang around people that is not... Uh, I don't know, how can I say this here? People that don't have the work ethic, the, the effort, don't want what we want. But because we know them and we are familiar with them. Y'all see that? See, I was looking, I said, boy, you know, I'm like, if I got to be like that Blue Jay, if I just got to hang off in a corner by myself till I find some more folk like me, I will. I'm not going to be listed among people and I, I'm telling y'all, so I'm, I'm putting real strict rules on myself now. This rest of this year, I have some things to accomplish. From this month all the way to the end of the year, I have goals. Do y'all hear me? I say I have goals. I have things to accomplish. And I will not allow myself to be hanging around mediocre folk People practicing mediocrity. All they want to do is go to church and have fun. All they want to do is just entertain, get into entertainment. I don't see nothing wrong with, with, with you going out, having a good time, going to a restaurant, eating a good dinner, and uh, maybe go to a concert or something if that's what you like to do, a comedy show, whatever you like. Nothing wrong with that periodically. But you can't afford to get consumed by pleasure. See, when you know what you got to do, you got to get on up and do it. I'll break something about procrastination. See, that feeling that comes on you is anxiety. When you think of something you got to do and you get a bad feeling, that's anxiety. You got to start speaking. Say, oh, no, no, no. I'm going to get up and do what I got to do. I speak it. I speak that I am not a procrastinator. And, and, I'm, and I always tell y'all, these are not spirits. These are habits. Everybody want to want, want call think the lazy habit uh a demon, oh, Pastor, pray this lazy demon off me. It's not a demon, it's you. You're making an excuse not to do what you want to do because your emotions are telling you not to do it. Oh, Pastor, please pray this procrastinating spirit off me. Ain't no spirit, that's you. That's your mind. And, and until we learn these things in church, until we get this here, not just in, I don't like just using that word, I'm talking about in life generally. Unfortunately, it's a whole lot of it that go on in, in church. We're supposed to be kingdom citizens, well-disciplined people. God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. The word sound mind means a complete peaceful mind. Peace means shalom, which means nothing broken and nothing need to be fixed. Are y'all hearing me? Mm-hmm. So, what is it that that you got going on that is like becoming a hindrance to you to where you cannot totally put your totally focus on your business, on your ministry, on your career, on whatever it is. Now, the limitations we have to remove, we have to allow ourselves the limitations. Give you a story. A locust, the big green grasshoppers, y'all see 
jumping around and they fly in swarms sometimes. Do you know they can't fly? I know you thought they can fly because you see them flying. But they can't fly. You say, well, Apostle, I see them flying. No, they can't fly. Mm -mm. They big body, it lim they're limited. Their wings are not set for the flight. It's amazing. God didn't make their wings for flight, but yet they fly. What's your excuse? Why you ain't flying? Look, look at this here. A locust. He can't fly. You know, he got them big eyes and stuff. He could use an excuse. Oh, my eyes are too big. Oh, my body's too big. I can't get them to do it. I can't fly. Think about the excuses. Think about the excuses you make. Well, you know, I, Pastor, I, 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 I can't do it because uh, uh, they don't like me. And, and, and they talking about me. And they did it to Jesus, didn't they? And, and Pastor, I, I, I came from a, a, a poor family. And a whole lot of us did. I, I, Pastor, I don't, have that all that, I don't have a proper education. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. God will put you in places you ain't qualified to be. That's the supernatural. So let's quit making excuses. Well, I don't know who want my services. Get out there and try to find it. Y'all hear me? Y'all depart off here. Y'all come off. Y'all leave a seat. It's Father's Day. Bless your apostle. They've been teaching you for months and months and months. Little Father's Day gift. Dollar sign 21 apostle. I've been teaching y'all for months and months and months. At least y'all can honor your apostolic father. Okay? It's up to you. But if you just want to leave a seed, leave a seed. All right? God bless y'all. Y'all know we need your help. When we get we come to that phase of starting to build that empowerment center, that event center, that media center. So I need, I'm going to need y'all help. And we're going to do it. But now let me get back. Let me get back. The locusts can't fly. Hmm. I said he can't fly. That was, what, what, now why is it that he flies though? Hmm. Now, he flies because one thing about the locust, he has an uncanny sense for the wind, just like an eagle does. And locusts, what they do is they can't fly. Them wings ain't set. But it's something about the wind when it gets up under those wings that are not supposed to fly. Uh-oh. The wind gets under their wings and they're able to flap them wings for miles and the wind's carrying Uh-oh. Let me tell you another thing ain't supposed to be able to fly. A bumblebee. Them big yellow jackets we call them. They ain't supposed to be able to fly. Somebody said, well, possibly they flying. They're not supposed to fly. You know why? Because number one, aerodynamic, their, their body is too heavy. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. Who's telling you what you can't do? Who's telling you what you ain't supposed to be doing? Oh, see, see, you, you can't do it because see, you, you ain't been to college and you ain't got no degree to run no company. And so what? I got the wisdom of God up on me. You can't put that business together. You ain't got no experience. The ancient of days do. And he know everybody in this earth realm that's got the experience that can help me. He know all the relationships that, that, that he can bring together to help me. Come on here. You're sitting around making excuses. Told you an excuse is a dressed up lie. When you when you run around, run around, you know, people run around the church kicking over chair, I can do all things in Christ. But when you get outside them doors and you got to get into the world of create wealth, all of a sudden now that disappears. Uh oh. It disappears now. Check this out. 
You're going to have to understand. Times and seasons. You're going to have to know. I told y'all in the last messages I was teaching on. In preparing for the off season. You're going to have to know. I said you're going to have to know. What season that you're coming into. Season that you're in and the one you're coming into. Because it's going to be important. Because every season carries assignments. That next season is going to carry an assignment. When you're sitting around and making excuses and God's going to begin to lay the assignments out to you, God is not, God, God, God knew that, you know, maybe you was trying to get to that thing months and months ago and seasons ago, but it wasn't time. In the right season, all of the right resources, the right relationships, the right, everything falls in line. Quit trying to push something forth that it ain't time. Now, I know, I know I'm telling you get your limit, but see, you got to work at getting your limitations out the way for when it's time to push. You're going to be able to push. Do this make sense? I said, do this make sense? Now, I want y'all to catch this here. I understand the fact that we are in challenging times. The economy is all in a challenge and Everything is all in an uproar. Everything is all, I mean, man, messed up. The world system is collapsing. But ain't you glad you, you got a, you're under a government called the kingdom of God system that never collapses. Kids, you got to learn the laws of the kingdom. You got to learn how it operates. You got to learn what kingdom culture is all about. That, that's all it takes is to learn what kingdom culture, learn, learn the laws. When I learned the fact that the law of faith, I, everything happening in the kingdom, it happens through faith. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. Anything I get, I got to spend faith for it. I put that in your term, you understand money. I have to spend faith to get it. I said, what about money? Money has to come. But I have to show God that I actually believe him. And I'm willing to walk in the direction that he, um, walk in the direction that he speaks. Now, I want you to understand something. That if you're going to be successful to any degree, yeah, you have to eliminate excuses. You have to get rid of mediocrity. You got to get away from around people that's not going your way. You got to get around other folk that can sharpen you. You have to get around other people that can sharpen you. You got to get around people that know more than you, have more than you. Don't be intimidated. Study autobiography, autobiographies of people. I was studying about the man who, who, who invented Rolex watches. Everybody's got a story. Create your story. I was studying about Mr. Honda, the one who invented Honda cars. Everybody has a story. Do y'all hear me? I say everybody has a story. No. I want you to understand this here. That we are in a time now. I studied all them people. Them people, and they all had certain things in common. Number one, they stayed consistent. And they constantly sought knowledge. They constantly worked to make their, their product better. Are you working to make yourself better? You're going to be the number one product that people got to buy into. Tell me what you want to be a pastor or, or an apostle. People got to buy into it. You got to have the personality. You can't be lazy. You got to get up. Tell me you've been called me an apostle and don't go, want to go around the block. Apostles are sent. See, a lot of these folks call themselves apostles and apostles. They just stay a pastor if that's what you are. You said apostle, you, that means it's time to get your butt up and go. It's time to get ready to be sent. 
Be sent to apostle seasons. They work in different seasons, time of their life. I'm coming into a season of building now. I've been in a season of where God has been dispatching me to build other folk ministry, to build people over the internet. And I'll continue to do this here. But now I'm coming into a season of building ministry so I can read, so people are going to be raised up to the next level, walk in success, walk in kingdom and power, man, and authority. Y'all see that? And some of y'all run up behind people and you're trying to get people to believe in you. Leave them alone. It'll take God. Especially your family, folks. Especially those close to you. Leave them alone. And you go on and do what God called you to do. Y'all see that? Quit, quit trying to convince them people to believe in you. Because at this point, they're not. That's one, of the, that's one of the roadblocks. That's one of the things hindrances. Because we get so vexed because people close to us don't believe in us. Well, well join the club. Jesus was there too. His brother James didn't believe in him. I mean, he believed, you know, to a degree. Can you imagine somebody, somebody telling, you know, your, your sister, brother, I'm the son of God. He said, bro, I know you're a good prophet, but wait a minute here. This son of God stuff? Uh-uh. So it took James, but he, he established the first church. So even if Jesus had that problem, guess what? You're going to have that problem. If Jesus had that problem, you are going to have that problem. Yeah. You're going to have that problem. I promise you. But here's the deal. You cannot give up because you have that problem. You have to keep pushing even though they don't believe in you right now. But they will. Now, they will in time. Because what God does, he raises you up in glory. What that means is that God raises you up to where they will see him upon you. Whether it's through your material wealth or whether it's through your ministry, the way he uses you. Your businesses you set up. And they're prospering and doing well now. Y'all see that? So what's going to happen is this here. It's that you are going to um, have to have a consistency in you and not be vexed because they don't believe in you. Mm -hmm. So quit trying to convince them. Quit trying to convince people that don't believe in you to believe in you. Just quit. Sometimes people can believe you to a certain point. But see, God is going to raise people up to that, that believe in you 100%. The 100% club. Mm -hmm. God is going to put 100%ers around you. Yes, he is. So I, ain't, I don't worry about nothing. Every, every season brings me new relationships. And then I get rid of, the, if I have to get, you know, because sometimes some relationships, even though they ain't all that good, but sometimes they'll yield you some good. But then God will turn around and start putting you with people that yields 100% that could really help you in your venture. Do y'all see that? I, I want you to understand, you can, be, you can succeed. You can succeed. But you have to understand where you are. You know, uh, you think because you got a lack of support. Well, the Bible said, if God be for me, who then can be against me? If God be for me, who? I said, who can be against me? Who can prevail over me? Who can stop me? The witch down the street? I don't think so. The warlock over across town? I don't think so. The haters in the next little area? I don't think so. Jealousy? I don't think so. Come on. No, I don't think so. Who's going to stop you? You better get your mind made up. Ain't nothing going to stop me. 
I'm putting all my excuses aside and all the mediocrity. I'm putting it aside. Uh, who's going to stop me from being healthy? I'm putting all the laziness aside. I'm going to start putting the right food in my body, on my exercise. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I am going to prosper. I'm going to put none uh, uh, food that causes all that inflammation. I'm going to stop putting all that stuff in there. All that white sugar, white bread, white for all that stuff that causes inflammation in the body. You're going to start putting green vegetables in your body. You're going to start putting nutritional food in. If you eat meat, you're going to eat nutritional lean type of meats. Come on. You're going to, you, you, and, and, and you're the custodian of your body. God ain't going to grab you and start stuffing the stuff down your throat. He's going to eat this broccoli and this cough out. You're going to eat it now. No, God's not going to do that. See, you're going to put it in your own mouth. You're going to keep them Big Macs out your mouth. Yeah, I said it. As if you got a problem with Big Macs. Some people are going to eat them and be all right. You're going to have to get, I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to uh, quit eating all that fried food. Nothing wrong with it. I stop eating all that fried food and stuff. Y'all see that? See, who who's stopping you from praying? You say the devil's stopping me. The devil hindering your prayer. There ain't no devil stopping you. You stopping your own self. You know why? Because it's laziness. What? Well, well, see, I, Pastor, I don't feel the spirit of the Lord. Uh, getting up on me to pray. He ain't got to get up on you to pray. Do y'all hear me? I said he ain't got to get up on you to pray. You got to get up on your own. You got to get your own butt up out that bed or wherever it is. You got to get up and pray. Someone said, but I don't feel the anointing. The anointing is in you if you just get up and start doing it. And one man called me when they told me, Pastor, I'm scared. I don't feel the power of God. I said, what you doing? He said, I'm just sitting at home. I said, well, get up and go outside and witness to somebody. You'll feel it then. You're just sitting at home. Why, why you want to just sit at home, a cloud over your head, and you feeling good? Y'all see, y'all not going to talk right now. You, do you really think that this walk has been easy for me? You know how many obstacles and stuff I've been through, still going through. But it ain't stopping me. Because I know that's a part of resistance is a part of it. Some of y'all going to have to realize that resistance is a part of it. Yeah. But because you being resisted, that don't mean you give in. Because the Bible said now it tells you to first submit yourself to God and then resist the devil. You cannot resist the devil if you don't submit or give in to God. Give in to the will of God. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in the season you're in. Are y'all hearing me? It's a, if it's a, whatever the season is. If it's a time to plant. The Bible says it's a time and season for everything under the sun. The time to plant. Time to harvest. It's time. Whatever time to sow. Whatever time it is, you better know what time it is in your life. And you better not be doing something because somebody else doing it. Might not be your season to be doing that. Hmm. I'm going to buy me a house. Is it a season? Oh, Jesus. Hmm. You're nagging God about being debt free, but you ain't ready. Y'all see that? Nothing wrong with debt as long as you know how to use it. There ain't nothing wrong with credit. You just got to know how to use it. That's all. Just, you just got to simply know how to use it. Hmm. You got to know how to use it. Now, I, I really want you to understand that you have to know how to use it. Now, because I don't demonize credit. They done built nice churches through credit. They done people to finance houses and paid them off through credit. Nothing wrong. Credit just requires discipline. If you're going to use it, if you're going to use it, be disciplined enough to pay it. 
Don't overload yourself so much that you can't be. Nothing wrong with it. Because it'll boost you. It'll help you. Because it might take credit to get you a duplex, a fourplex, a four apartment unit. Something that's going to make you money. What, what would be wrong with that? You might use credit to get you a car to drive, Uber, or live with. That's a money maker. Oh my God, see y'all ain't helping me. See that? You might use your credit card to buy some some uh, watches and jewelry and 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 and, and uh, these little necklaces women wear and stuff to make money with. See, it's not wrong. You need capital. Sometimes you gotta create capital. Mm -mm. And sometimes you use credit as capital. Oh my goodness. I want y'all to understand something today on this Motivational Saturday. God wants you to rise up out the dust. Rise up. Shake yourself off. Quit laying around to when I'm waiting on God. Yes, to a degree, you might be. But make sure that when he start talking to you, start talking. Come on. Make sure that you hear what he's saying. Hmm. Make sure. Now, you, you have to understand something. You have to start filtering things. Shifting things. You know, there, there's stuff that even what, with what you're doing, you got to sift out the bad stuff. You got to enrich it. Y'all hear me? I said you got to enrich what you're doing. You got to put good things into you. Enrich yourself. Hmm. Enrich yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you all this here. Many of you going to understand on this motivational Saturday. We always want breakthroughs and miracles. Without being practical. There are certain things the Bible says haven't done all to do to stand. Stand. Most people ain't done all it takes to stand. That's why they ain't standing. That's why the devil got them bent down. Come on here. Having done all to do to stand. That's why I began to examine myself. Lord, have I done all? Have I done everything? Have I done all, Lord? Mm. Have I done everything, Lord? Mm. Have I done all? Have I done all to do to stand? Now, this is interesting here. Because when the Bible said he's able to open up doors, now this bring me to another important uh, factor about this message. It said he's able to open up doors. But the problem with open doors, you got to realize when they're open. Do y'all see that? I said, the problem with open doors, you got to realize when they're open. And then you got to know what are they open for. Y'all see that? You say, let's make a deal. What's behind door number one? No, God opened up doors with no mystery. But if you ain't got enough discipline to see God, you'll never know why the door is open. It will be a mystery to you then. Because you got to understand that in this season, the devil is very deceptive. He'll open up demonic doors. You got to know if it's a demonic door that's opening. Do y'all follow me? You got to know if it's a demonic door. Come on. You got to know if it's a demonic door. Because <clears throat> all opportunities ain't from God. There is some things that want to swallow you up whole. Eat you alive. Eat your money up. Canker worm your money. Do y'all hear me? So what you have to do is you have to understand the fact of the matter. Hmm. What is it that I have to do? To understand a real opportunity. I'm number one, I got to get in God's presence. And I got to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I got to pray that God 
quicken my discernment. I've been teaching on exposing demon spirits too. Because in this season, sometimes if the devil can't stop something, he'll try to create something fake for you to walk in. Y'all hear me right now. If it's a season for your husband and a wife, he'll, he'll be sending these busters, these folk that ain't, you know, you know, when God just spoke, God, God, you know, because one thing I feel, I believe that a man finds a wife. A man who finds a wife finds a good, and the wives don't find husbands. Uh-oh. I know it's the 2022 and all that stuff. I know we got all these independent women. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Pastor, you don't understand me. I don't need no man to pay my bills. That, and that's good. A lot of men would welcome a strong woman like you. And y'all combine y'all resources. But don't let all that pride, I'm going to do this on my own. God might be trying to send you somebody to help. Not just to lay in the bed with. Y'all ain't going to talk. Uh-oh. Tell me somebody that can help you, you help them. Come on. So, oh my gosh, she took a solo moko say. I am telling y'all today, the devil got doors like God. The devil have windows like God have windows. Windows is an interesting thing because they are time limited. Windows are time limited. See, when, when a window opens, it's a certain amount of time for you to go through that window. A door is a little different, but a window is a moment. It, it, it's a moment in the season of time. And, it's a, and that's where you'll have to have uh, your mind well disciplined enough to be able to make quick decisions accurately and properly. If you go back and listen to the law of thinking, the law of decision making, you, you got to understand. And the law, and I'm going to do one on calling the law of research. Because, see, your, your, your decisions is going to have to be basically done off of the information that's in your subconscious that's why if you get it all in there accurately you'll be able to make decisions quick rich people really how they get rich because they have the ability y'all see that they have the ability they have the ability to be able to make quick accurate decisions Quick, accurate decisions. Y'all see that? When you bumbling and stumbling around, uh, 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 they, they, they done made the decision. They realized it's a window of opportunity. They done took advantage of the opportunity to make their money, and you still sitting around, uh, well, I think, well, let me, y'all pray for me. I, I need I need y'all to pray that I, that, that, that I, no, 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 no. You need to get your mind right. You need to get your mind accurate enough to make decisions quick. In certain seasons, in certain things, in a season, you're going to have to be able to make quick decisions. Are y'all hearing me? You're going to have to be able to make quick decisions. Quick. Quick, quick, quick. Now, I'm not talking about emotional, hasty decisions. I'm talking about decisions that is well thought out. And you think quick. And you have plenty of wisdom. And even you'll hear God's voice in it. Telling you to move. See if you ain't spend no time in his presence. You ain't gonna hear his voice. Do, do y'all understand me today? Oh, God I thank you. I, I spend time teaching like this here. Because. I, I want you to be able to live a quality life. I want you to be able to live a quality life. And but I know you got to be able to make quality decisions and you got to be able to scale all the junk out of your life. All the mediocrity. You got to move all that stuff. Anything that's hindering your mental strength. That's stopping you from become mental tough, mentally tough. You gotta have to grow thicker skin. You gotta get tough as nails. 
You grit your teeth, say, I'm coming. Y'all not going to stop me. I'm going to get this business going. I'm going to get this job going. I'm going, I am going to make an opportunity if I have to. See, you, you got to be mentally tough. Tough as nails. Take no mess off the devil. Don't take, I, I don't like, don't take no mess off yourself. And then all these folks bring in Henry. Don't, don't even worry about it. Don't entertain it. Get them all even out your mind. Don't even think about them. He said, I'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Can y'all see that? Who y'all? This is motivation. I want to motivate you. I want you to get to the next level. And not just, I want you to get into a quantum leap. I want you to take a leap. Skip over levels. Jump into places where you should be. God got a way that bring you out. And you center yourself, you're behind, but he'll bring you out. And you come out so big. David said, I cried in the Lord and he in my distress. And he brought me out in a large place. God will bring you out into a large place. A place to where it'll look like you came overnight. It happened overnight, but they don't know the years and time and process that you've been through. All of a sudden, you have this company going. You have this ministry going. You have businesses going. You have things going. You own multiple buildings of real estate. Your, your portfolio is stuffed a couple million dollars in your stock portfolio. They see, and, and it seemed like it would seem like that you you drive up in a nice Mercedes or even a Rolls Royce, whatever you want. They would think mm, that you came overnight, but they don't understand what you've been going through. Do y'all see that? They don't understand the things you've been doing. They don't understand. And what I want you to understand is here today. I want y'all to really understand that I love each one of y'all and I want y'all to go to the next level, to the next place in success, in God, in the kingdom. I want you to leap beyond your limitations. See, the man at the gate called beautiful. He was left there daily. See that? They looked on him. See? He was left. Hmm. He told, Peter told him to look upon him. He looked. Then Peter said, him, look on me, take my hand. And then the Bible says, he pulled him up and he leaped. Is God going to have to pull you up out of something? This man was pulled out simply by the faith of Peter. He leaped that day. Can I prophesy right now? I feel a leaping coming on. I feel some of y'all getting ready to leap because some of y'all been in a place to where this man couldn't do nothing about his condition. And some of you been seeking God and you can't do nothing about your condition. But I come to serve a prophetic notice today that you are getting ready to leap beyond your limitations. This man was limited, couldn't walk. Oh, I speak the word of the, of the Lord today. You're getting ready to leap. You're getting ready to leap on this motivational Saturday. You're getting ready to leap. I command you to leap. You're getting ready to leap. The enemy, he knows your situation. He knows where you are and he's laughing and thinking that you can't overcome. But I'm telling y'all today that there is a supernatural anointing over this broadcast and you're getting ready to leap supernaturally. I don't know what's got you impotent. That means without power. What's got you powerless? What's got you powerless? Prophesy whatever it is that's had you powerless. 
will not have you powerless no more. There is an anointing mm, that is rising on this occasion. You're going to see. You're going to understand. Nothing shall be impossible. I speak today on this here motivational Saturday. I speak today on this motivational Saturday. This is your time. This is your day. Nothing shall be impossible. I feel the breakthrough anointing today. Yes, Lord. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh-huh. Yes. I want to say today, uh, Sister Dina, there's an amazing breakthrough. There's an anointing today. You've been in a place to where you you say, like, I can't really help myself right now. But God said today that anointing I said of leaping is on you. And you're getting ready to leap. When I say leap, you're going to leap into that house. You're going to leap into that house. You, you, I keep telling you that. And God said that he's fixing some more stuff that has been, you know, messed up there. Some more stuff. Y'all see that? But, Sister Dana, God told me to tell you, you get ready because it's time to leave. And God said this is coming into this mid part of the year. God got some plans for you. You watch what I tell you. He got some plans for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm-hmm. And I want to say, too, here, um, Sister uh, Daphne Clark, power of God is moving for you today and the Lord said that he's getting ready to fix some things that look like can't be fixed but I heard God say with him nothing shall be impossible <clears throat> there's a strong level of the Holy Ghost and the Lord said that he is fixing some things for you Sister Daphne and every door that's been closed he said windows are open up and you're going to recognize and you're going to go straight through these windows and the Lord says, and nothing shall be impossible. There's a breakthrough, said the Lord God. Mm-hmm. Sister uh, Margaret, Pastor Margaret, the Lord said that I'm deputizing you to walk in a level of recruiting people. Yep. You're going to become a recruiter, a winner of people, a winner of souls. And I hear God saying this here. Every obligation that need to be taken care of shall be taken care of. And nothing, Pastor Margaret. God told me to get ready for some financial things happening over the next two weeks in an awesome way. And nothing shall be impossible, said the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, Greta James, the Lord told me to tell you. He said, yes, sow the seed. Do what he told you to do. Do it. Do it and don't don't slack. Do it. I'm just telling you what God said. Some God told something he told you to so a while back. He said, Do it. Do it. And don't slack. Don't slack. Don't slack. He said, God told me to take, don't slack, Agreta. Yes. Because God said, I want to remove some stubborn issues that's been standing in your way for about three months. And the enemy has really been causing some habit. But Sister Greta, God told me to tell you he's gonna move. But he wants you to move. I don't, you know me, I don't, I don't, I don't tell folk nothing unless God say it. And there's a seed that God wants you to sow and he wants you to do it instantly. And if it's through sacrifice, do it. God is doing something that the devil will not be able to undo. Oh, my God. And nothing shall be impossible. You watch what I tell you. 
I release an anointing upon you. You are springing forth like never before. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Sister Yvette, the Lord told me to tell you, fire is falling. Fire is falling. Sister Yvette, fire is falling. The Lord said, fire is falling. I mean, fire is falling. Glo shall I by my side. Fire is falling, Sister Yvette. That's all the Lord said. He said, tell the woman of God, I'm anointing her with fire. Blue flame fire. I'm anointing you. This is the season. There's some more revivals getting ready to come up. There's some more engagements coming up. Your ministry is expanding. And I hear God say your business is expanding. The, the amount of revenue your business was taking is going to take in even more now. Revenue, income is increasing even right now. And I heard God said nothing shall be impossible. Everything going to go well at the bank. God said, I'm getting everything all together. La, show to la, my, my side. I'm getting things together, said the Lord. Yes, I am. Glory to God. He said, I'm getting things together. Supernaturally. Mm, glory. Sister, mm, Peter, la, ba, ma, sha. Sister, Paula, Alexander, you, you, I see you still there. Sister Paula, the Lord said, the season of crying is over. Paula, the season of crying is over. The season of crying is over. God says sometimes you got to get up, lick your wounds, and get up and move. It's no time to sit around and cry. No time to sit around in a pool of sadness. But the Lord said, I'll prove all things. I'll prove, he said, I just want you and your husband to know what I'm actually, exactly what I've called y'all to do. And if y'all got to start just teaching the word wherever you are. Start teaching the word. Don't worry about titles and all that. So stop teaching the word of God. That's all God wants you to do. Sister Paula, I want you to hear me. I, the Lord said, tell me, y'all, start. if you got to start in your apartment, start, what? start teaching the word. Get the word out to people. Invite people and teach them the word. It ain't about all no bunch of titles and stuff. Let the anointing speak. Let the anointing declare what title that's going to be up on, on you, your husband, whoever. Let the anointing do it. It ain't about kissing up the folks. Getting them to approve yourself. The anointing is already on both of you. God said, get up and use it. Oh, bless his holy name. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm, I feel the Holy Spirit, y'all. Y'all don't understand, I feel an anointing a day on me, and I feel like there's some of you coming to a level where you've never been before. Mm, glow by by my shot. And, and Anita, the Lord, the, because the Lord said, I've opened up some doors today, right now. Windows have opened. Some new 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 windows. The Lord said, be mindful. Don't try to go through old windows, but new windows have opened. Behold, I do a new thing. And I hear God said, and it shall spring forth. The Lord said, I'm going to give you new directions. And today, the spirit of God is going to give you a stronger level of purpose with your business. And I hear God said, you get ready because you're getting ready to ground and help a whole lot of people. Said the Lord. Hmm. Close shot by Mandela by my side. Mm, mm, mm. Oh God, we bless your name right now. Kisa Tando Loboko by my shot. Oh the Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost moving. I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all know the day, y'all know tomorrow's Father's Day. I challenge y'all, y'all. I shouldn't even have to tell you. I've been I've been an apostolic father over this line going on a year. Speaking the word of God. At least y'all could honor me with a gift. I don't care what it is. Whatever it is you want to give to help your apostle as honor me as an apostolic father. Okay? Whatever you can do, it's up to you. But I would appreciate you. It would show me that you love me. And that, you know, that what I'm doing, I'm not doing in vain. I know I'm not doing in vain. 
Because I'm going to do it if a person don't give anything. I'm sick of this is an assignment for me to do. My assignment ain't based off money. But if you want to give and you want to help the cause, because I'm telling you something, we getting ready to go and build this, get into this media center. Oh, yeah. We're getting ready to get into this media center, this event center. We're going to start having meetings. And we're going to have start having things from all, all little people. From all, I'm telling y'all, y'all have been instrumental in helping, helping me by equipment. You have been helping me by mics and stuff, and I really appreciate you. Amen. So I'm saying tomorrow's Father's Day, and anybody want to sow a Father Day seed, I invite you to. Okay? Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord God. Anybody now. God is good. I appreciate y'all very much. And I, and I hope today that this motivational Saturday has motivated you. I hope today that you've been inspired. I hope today you've been inspired today. And I hope that things will just work out. And I sense prosperity. I really sense prosperity. And y'all know that cash app is dollar sign 21. Zell. You can do Zell. Uh-huh. All right. And so I want to praise God for each one of you today. Yes. I want to thank God for you today. All right? So I want y'all to be blessed. And tomorrow, we'll see what we, what we do tomorrow. You know. Uh-huh. We'll see what we do tomorrow. How you doing, Alex Mayo? How you doing? Mm -hmm. Blessing is coming on you, Alex, and God opening up new doors, new territories, new things in your business, and nothing shall be impossible. And the Lord said that things are opening up and doors are opening. And he said, get ready because there's a great breakthrough today. And I loose it on you in Jesus' name. You're in good direction, and you're going to understand which way to go. All right? Okay, God bless you guys. Until tomorrow, I'll look to see y'all. I feel the presence of God all on me now. Let me pray right now. Father, I release the anointing on the people of God. I release the power. I release the glory now. Let it fall on the people of God. We bind the devil in Jesus' name. Glow by my masha. Nothing shall be impossible. Doors have opened. Things are opening. And I sense the presence of the anointing now. God, heal bodies, heal minds, deliver, set free. I command breakthrough on this motivational Saturday. Breakthrough in their finances. Breakthrough in their family. Breakthrough, Lord. Yeah, there it is in Jesus' name. I just saw my sister Angie. Angie. Angie, the Lord told me to tell you, he said, get ready because every snake head has been chopped off. I saw some snakes crawling around you. The Lord said, I've chopped their heads off. And I hear God saying, nothing shall be impossible. The miracle you need has been done right now. And I hear God say, anything that looked like it was going backwards, it's going forward now. Nothing shall be impossible. And God said, "He, this is your season walking on a new anointing. A brand new anointing. It's your season and time to walk in a brand new anointing. Yes, nothing shall be impossible. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. Remember, y'all, so a Father's Day gift, who all can. You know, I shouldn't have to tell y'all to do it. I've been faithful to y'all. I've been teaching, teaching and prophesying, praying for y'all. Amen. So whatever you can do, I appreciate it. All right? Let's make it special. Y'all show me that you love me, okay? Show me that you love me. Amen. Show me that you love me. This is your apostle and prophet and success coach, Eddie Tate. I love you guys. Until the next episode. All right. God bless now.